This is Governor Larry Hogan, and I don't always have time to listen to podcasts, but uh, I do enjoy listening to the Maryland Crabs podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Hey, welcome to the Maryland Crabs. It is Thursday again at noon. and You're lying, then we'd be doing it live. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so it's He's a liar, Tuesday people. at 11 o'clock or something like that. We got new digs, though. We do. We are here at the Commons at 209 West Street, high above West Street. Yeah, a little echoey, but that's okay. It's the, the ceiling. It's beautiful in here, so it's, we're, it's we're, our, we'll live with the echo. It's our new our new co-working space, and uh, you can rent a desk by the day or the month or a private office or anything. If you're in the market to do it, just come on up and check out the Commons. We like it. They've got a conference room. Uh, there's a refrigerator I saw that had beer in it. And uh, How many breaks are we taking during this thing? You know, I'll, I'll throw out all the, the where you can follow us stuff right away. I mean, get follow Follow us up on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating. Leave us a review. Subscribe. Subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook at The Maryland Crabs. Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast. Email us at info at themarylandcrabs.com or check out all of our episodes on themarylandcrabs.com. This week, I think we're all a little bit pissed off if we live in Annapolis and we've got somebody who... we got a new friend to break into place. Um, who really laid it out very eloquently, I think, uh, last weekend in an editorial on the Capitol newspaper. Jimmy DeButts, who is the associate editor for the Capitol... Capitol Gazette, is that the official name? Capitol Gazette, yeah, is our official corporate... No, no, I'm, Name. Okay. So, so, so. <laughs> amateur, or whatever that word is. <laughs> it's a five dollar word. I shouldn't try to use it. The Capitol Gazette. But on July 29th, he wrote an editorial. Just said the latest market house debacle spotlights Annapolis ineptness. And with the vote on the city council last night, if it wasn't spotlighted prior to that. Last night really sort of cranked up the wattage on the light and really shown what it is. And to be honest with you, I think everybody that sits on that council has put themselves at risk for gaining that office seat, that office again, except for Alderman Littman and Alderman Pfeiffer, who wanted to go forward with it. And they're the only two that aren't running exactly. again for office. You know, I always said that we give so much attention to the market house that maybe more than it deserves, but maybe because that is a symbol of government ineptitude in general. And every government has that. But then you think about it and say, we're talking about at least $6 million that has gone into that black hole. So it is a little more than symbolic. Yeah, I think it's just a perfect, you, you hit it right. I mean, it's, it is a symbol. It should be a shining star for the, for the city. It's, a, it's, you know, it's a historical jewel. It's, it's right there at the most prime waterfront view that you could have in the city. It's symbolic of the city's inability to make change. I mean, it's like... What I've learned, I've been, I've been in, uh, in the capital for about five years, and what I've learned is there's more political risk in actually doing something than not doing something. So I think that's what we saw yesterday, last night, is the vote of status quo, don't rock the boat. When you try to rock the boat, the people that live here and don't, they got theirs. They don't want to, ch- they don't want anything changed. And if it's somewhat weird or different, then get it out of my face. We were talking, and as it happens, as it usually happens, city council once again kicked the can down the road, as they do with so many things. And I am being critical today. I mean, well, I know they did it with the budget. Pitch, but everything always gets kicked down the road, and they say we're going to deal with it later, and it rarely gets dealt with. But I was texting with John last night, and we were talking about this before we started. What several people said is we don't want to rush into this. And I thought I was literally going rush into this. We've been dealing with this since 2003. So I, I was telling John, I was, I was going on a, on a Miller Light rant that it was my daughter was born when this started and she's about to go into high school. <laughs> we have been in Afghanistan for less time than we've been dealing with this process. And we're being told that it, we don't want to rush into it. At some point, it gets ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I think in, it's just... It's the chaos of their own making. I mean, in April, they passed this legislation. Hey, we're going to do something. We're going to set some guidelines. And actually, what their guidelines and what they were trying to do, I think, was Joe Budge's efforts was, was commendable. But you should have known in April, elections are coming in, in September or in the primaries. In, yeah, primaries in September. Certainly. So 
it's going to be rushed. So that is the biggest bailout I've ever heard of. Oh, we, it, we, we don't want to make a decision because, there's, you know, well, you've had at least four years. If you're on the city council, you're the mayor, you've had four years to set a direction and you decided in April we're going to, we're going to vote on this before our end of our term. Plus, we're, I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I want to go over the history of this. But I just one thing that nagged at me is that one of the older persons last night said, you know, I don't feel like we've had enough input. I mean, actually, two people said that. I'm like, how can you say... We've not had enough input. I mean, how much more input? And they said, well, we haven't heard from other people. I'm like, you have plenty of opportunity to let yourself heard. We can't go door to door asking people to give us their input. Yeah. At some point, you have, to, you have to look at the people who want to be in the participatory process. I almost made through that. <laughs> and, and take their, their input. But, but at some point, you've got to do something. And yeah. it just seems like, like you said, people are afraid to do anything. Yeah. And where is the leadership? Honestly, you know, it's like if you weren't going around talking to people about this, two years ago, six months ago, what are you gonna learn in the next three weeks? And then also, it, it, leaders are supposed to lead. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes to make it a controversial decision, but if you do it for the right reasons, you know, I wrote a column, I think, in somewhere, April, February, somewhere around there. Uh, I, I think the ideal thing for the market house would be Cafe, a Cafe de Mon kind of place where it's essentially, it's obviously centrally located. From it's New, got, Orleans, yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's iconic. If you go to New Orleans, unless you don't like sugar, <laughs> You're going to go to Cafe de Mont because it's such an uh, iconic place and it's, the beignets are just fabulous. So that's what we should be selling to people that come to Annapolis. Hey, come to our X. Is it, well, I don't, and I don't know, I don't have the answer what that would be, but just to have another uh, cafeteria, mall. Now, that exactly was the proposal that was put forth by Mike Ashford the last time we went through this exercise. But I want to step back because, mm-hmm. as Tim mentioned, his daughter was barely born when this thing started, that... A lot of people have moved into town, have come into the midst of this market house, and may not know the full history of it. And And I often wonder, as Annapolis, more than most cities who romanticize their past, and a lot of time that past doesn't exist, I often wonder, going, are we romanticizing the the market house the way it used to be? And I I was here for years when it was, I, I moved here in 98, as you did, and it was gritty and active, and it was awesome. I mean, so I... So I'll give an app. An app was it like I, uh, people? Somebody mentioned it. You know, the, there's successful markets, similar markets in Baltimore. Was you know, like Cross Street, and it was, was it that kind. It or? was not. Yes, absolutely. It was. It was a, a vast. We'll say open five thousand square foot, but, but grittier block it, with concrete floors. There was no tile. There okay. was no. It, and they had little booths. I mean, Smoke, they had a candy steam, booth. Noise, they had oysters. The they had a chicken. They. I think they had two people that cooked. They had the big cheese was in there, which now has a store. Mm-hmm. But they had a little booth, and it was very similar to other markets. I mean, you'd see like the canvas or plastic, you know, whatever the curtains hanging yeah, yeah, yeah. between them, and it had. I think it had two wide way aisles and one long end to end, and it was jamming. I mean, to the yep. point where you go down there and you'd be like. Uh, this is bullshit. I'm out of here. You know, to, <laughs> too, to go too, someplace too else. Yeah. yeah, which made me laugh when Harvey Blonder says a couple weeks ago, well, you know, if when we get busy, we can always go to Buddy and get foods. I'm like, well, how often has that happened? <laughs> yeah. uh, that you've got to run across the street to get additional food. Yeah. But then the hurricane came. But it was uh, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and it needed repairs. The building was actually structurally needing repairs. Thankfully, if you will, the hurricane. Yeah, I mean, not to romanticize it too much because, I mean, we, we, it was awesome. It was great. But the, the building was turning into a shithole. It, I mean, it, it was it was showing its age. It really did need that. And the, and the flood, certain, the surge mm-hmm. certainly didn't help matters any. So you can't blame the city for saying, all right, we're going to upgrade. But for some reason, and this is where it gets murky. Well, what happened? The hurricane, the hurricane came in, caused some additional damage. And the city said, well, we're going to take advantage of this situation. Right. And we are going to take all of the tenants... And we're going to say, hey, dude, you're out of business for six months. We need to re-roof and do whatever we need to do. And I can't remember exactly what the things we're going to do. I think there was an air conditioning involved in there and uh, everything else. So they displaced all the tenants with the promise that when they were done the renovations, they were going to come back in. Somewhere in the middle of that, the city said, well, you know, a Dean and DeLuca would be really good here. And they went and they started to negotiate with Dean and DeLuca. They started to negotiate with Annapolis Seafood to bring in there as well. And I'm, I don't have the exact timeline of when they got to each of them. But in the end, when it reopened, there were probably 15 businesses. And, and make no mistake, these are really small businesses. These are one in two people type operations. You know, somebody's baking cookies in the morning, mm-hmm. coming in, selling them during the day, goes home at night and bakes them again. Out of business, just just gone. Some the only people that survived, I believe, were um, the big cheese, right? Right. Yeah. 
uh, which got a, a spot right there on Randall Street. I don't, you know, uh, Mahoian Chicken was a little bit, he jumped up into Cheap Cheap in the Festival of Riva for a little bit, but that's gone now. And by the way, we ought to say that a lot of the history we're getting for this, I don't know, if, Jimmy, if you have ever read this, it was, uh, there was a blog here called Capital Punishment. Annapolis yes. Capital Punishment. Right. Uh, which was about 10 years ago, and that was Brian Gill, who owns a catering oh, company. Oh, no, 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 no. That was that, I'm sorry, uh, Annapolis Politics? Yeah. Anyway, so he, he had a phenomenal... We'll find it and link it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll have the show notes. But he had the... Def- it was Brian Gill, and he spent a lot of time tracking everything down, including emails and stringing everything together. So he uh, broke down the definitive history of the market house, which was when the Mayor Moyer contacted Dean and DeLuca, okay. who pulled out and whoever. And it was a long history, and we'll link to that, but it was really amazing. So we pulled a lot of our knowledge so from the, what it was. So the political um, disappointments have gone... I mean, that's that's... Pretty shady to begin well, with. Well, says you would not give the people who were there originally a chance to exactly. And the contention that in Brian's article, and I have no reason to disbelieve it, was that the Dina DeLuca was a non-starter. That we that the common knowledge right now is that they pulled out, and they're saying no, they were never in. Uh-huh. That and and when they said we're not in, it was seen by the city as a negotiating ploy, but it wasn't. They, and there's a lot of problems with that concept anyway, because I mean I'm not I'm not a business guy, but where do you put parking? How do you get that much traffic? Mm-hmm. How do you, you know how do you operate as a retail business? in an area that's not retail friendly, especially when it comes to high volume and they need the high volume. Yeah, yeah. So they replaced them with the, the new vendors after uh, expelling the former vendors. But the big problem at the time was the air conditioning because they didn't take the air conditioning into account when it came to the design uh, that include the, the kitchens and the heat that was generated by the ovens and everything. So it was, va- was under engineered badly. So they got the, they rented a system first by some account ten thousand dollars a month and I'd have to check the numbers, which was this bulky air conditioner. Took up five parking. Took spots. Took up five parking wow. spots, <laughs> and that went on for the better part of two years at ten grand uh, a year. So you had vendors, and then all the vendors vamoosed all at once, like in the middle of the night. They pulled a, a, a Baltimore Colts and they were gone. Like you came in and everything was gone. There was a pizza place. There was a donut place. There was they 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 all seems left. to be the way to leave the market. Out. Yeah, so that's uh, what's <laughs> happened with the current. So then it was re- redesigned at that point with geothermal, and they, they redid. So and this they, is going into the Cohen administration? Yes. yes. Okay. So it was re- redesigned because I think the common wisdom was that the, the original redesign was not adequate for what they wanted, so they redid it. So what you're seeing now is the second iteration since 2004. Okay. So uh, and Somewhere there's air conditioners in storage someplace that... <laughs> oh, so they weren't renting, they were buying them? Yeah. They bought them while. Wow. The city can't use. And you know, ultimately, Mayor Cohen got it open several days before his yeah. defeat and it was you know with the, the chosen harvey blonder to run it but i mean in, in the interim i mean there were homestead gardens was in there at one point really? and they, they bailed out uh fractured prune was in there one seaside time seaside pizza and they um, there was there was a bunch of which is awesome pizza by the and way there was a uh, hamburger joint from the eastern shore i can't and remember was, it wasn't vaccaro's in there yeah they were the one yep. that's one i'm, I'm totally missed because i love vaccaro's well i'll tell you vaccaro's <laughs> they were the ones that was that the sandwich place or the the vaccaro's was a italian pastry right and yeah. they got screwed because they were convinced to stay in when everyone else went oh, out. Okay. So they were the only ones in there for a long time. And then and they, they did redesigned. Sue, they they did them. sue the city. They did sue. So there's plenty of blame to be so That's the history. Okay. So there's plenty of blame to spread across yeah, I'm bad several. I love Vicaro's. Like every time I go to Baltimore and literally we go there. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when, I, when I read about that, <laughs> that was one of those. I was like, I have a, a vendetta against the city. <laughs> so this has been going on for at least 13 years. Yeah, since wow. 2003, 2004. So the question is, can the market house work? I mean, can, can you recreate what it was Probably previous to 2003, that whole organic collection of businesses and just that, per, or can can you design that? And if if so, can the city do it? I think the city yeah, has proven it cannot. The um, mayor panel ladies, I spoke to him on because I, you know, I feel it's obligation at least talk if I'm going to write something critical of on the mayor because specifically because I use his name, I didn't use the rest of the people's names in the in the article. But I figured that as a collective whole, they have had time. But I talked to him on Thursday, um, and uh, he was saying that. His vision, that's what I, you know, what, what I asked one is his vision for. And he's like, he'd like to see it what, like it was when he grew up. You know, there was actual vendors. And I don't know at that time if there were uh, fresh produce. produce. I mean, when I think about the ones of Baltimore, yeah. I think about fresh produce. And like you said, Steve. I mean, there, there was a, a huge, I mean, it wasn't, you weren't going there to shop and yeah, spend yeah. hours there. But if you're walking home or, you right. know, on the way. Right, a loaf of bread. Yeah, like so, I mean, I can see that as a, you know, if, in, if, if it was like like the Cross Street Market or, or you know, Lexington's a huge one in Baltimore, so it's not going to be that big. But if it was something where... I can see that if, if that's what worked there one time, fine. I just think, and really, it's a smaller, small-ish space. You know, it's not. 
that many vendors, I just, I, I have a hard time believing that's going to work in the long term. I mean, it hasn't worked in the last five years or four years. So under the, under the vision that Mayor Penalties has. Yeah. Or, or even the vision he inherited, you know, right. so no, to, be, yeah. to be fair for him, he did inherit this now. I, think. I agree. Yeah. He, he got, I mean, people are starting to kind of, uh, well, people can, can point their fingers. I don't think Mayor Penalides is, uh, you can't point a very long finger. No, at I don't think it's, I don't think it's his fault in the sense of it's what he inherited it, and it is. His big talking point, or, is or Josh, it's open. I just yeah. yeah, I think you know, I, I think the money. I think when people see six million dollars thrown into anything, and they don't see it because how many people in the city of uh, Annapolis go down to the market house every day, or you know, so it's it's not something they if they if it's forced drive. You put six million dollars in forced drive, you probably have parades, you know. <laughs> but uh, but so I I understand that, but I do think it's his responsibility, and Mary Penley's responsibility to have a vision. If his vision is, I just want it to be kind of what it is and be open. That's fair. I, that's a fair argument. I don't agree with that, uh, I, but I think the city council and, and the mayor have has failed to, to project what their what their vision is. What do they want? I, I had to ask them that because I, I don't know, and I and I'm probably not. I don't think it was a very substantive answer. I mean, they, it's good to have what you wanted as a kid, but what ha- worked in the '80s is not working now. So what's what, I mean? What's the difference? between what he grew up with and what we, we saw when we first moved here, which was very successful versus, and I'm not going to sneer and say food court because, you know, if they had vendors in there, nothing against the vendors who are there now. I, I guess, I guess, you know, why can't it work? Why, why can't we get what we have in, in well, Boston well, well, and Baltimore? Well, what we had and what the mayor grew up with are identical. You've got to remember the mayor's 31 or 32, maybe 33 now. So, I mean, he was Yeah, he's remember when he was a little kid. He, he was 15, I don't know, 15, 16. I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, it was, it was filled with St. Mary's kids. They would, they would walk down after school. Mm-hmm. So, what's uh, the difference between what it was and what it is now? Like, let's be specific because I think, well, I think everyone's I, speaking in generalities now think, when it I think, comes to... I think to, there's a price point and I think there's a variety of the merchandise that's offered. Well, we said, well, hold on. But I mean, all right, so there's a, there was cheap, cheap chicken, which everyone, that's the first thing they talk about. There's chicken there now. That's actually not bad. There's burgers then. There's burgers now. There's seafood then. There's seafood now. What is the difference between what it was and what it is now? Well, I think, and I don't, I don't have, I, um, we've written about it. I don't know the exact price point per square foot. I, I guarantee it's a lot more expensive now. And that's why they're probably rotating it out. I because don't know if it's hellaciously expensive. Like if I can get a sandwich there and I've seen the sandwiches, they look good. You know, it's seven, eight bucks and the big cheese is that much, you know, which is excellent. Yeah. I love well, it. Well, I guess but... the point is they, that's how much they can sell it for. They probably can't sell a sandwich for $9 or they would. Um, well, the, but, and it's but all subsidized be, right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so. I, I think it has to be something that's special. Well, and let's put it this way, too. You can get a burger in a lot of places now. <laughs> the store, the, all the vendors who were there in there previously was, was paying little or, in some cases, no rent. And they still couldn't that's make true, it. Yeah. That's an issue. I mean, yeah. that, that's, I mean so I, I think the problem, Jimmy, what you said before, is that you talk to council and the mayor about what their, what their specific vision is. And you're right. They all kind of weasel out of it. And I am saying weasel out of it because everyone has different visions. But I think if you try and, and qualify, how is it different in the way it operates now, which is empty? You go in there at any given time, yeah. it's empty. I'm not being critical. I'm being no, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm honest. I yeah. But but what's the difference between the way it was then and the way it is now? What could if you could wave a magic wand right now? How would you? Money's not an object. Getting through council is not an object. How would one transform this market house into something that's bustling and thriving yeah. and viable? If if it was in a vacuum, you put a, a great crab house there, right? Because right. that would that would be a quintessential Maryland thing. Because we don't have any crab be, houses yeah. in town. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> well, we well we we have people that sell crabs. I, I think. That would be the easy thing if there was no other people selling crabs. But I think you've got to have a. I, I don't know if I don't know if if uh, I don't think a bar type thing. Uh, I don't think that. Well, works. that's that's got a whole. See, now we're issue. falling into that where where we're given the power to change yeah. it, and we're all kind of like. No, I, I think don't know. I would find some kind of specialty like. And I love Cajun food. There's no Cajun. Food. There's no. And I don't know if people would come here, but you could have crabs on the menu. You could have um, crab cakes. You could no, have, but are we talking? So in in Jimmy World, are we talking about a big restaurant? Yes, it'd be, so it would massive? be. A, it would be a one. You know. Okay. I mean, step back. That way, I love Cajun food, but. I also love um, Old Stein Inn in Edgewater. Sure, love it's a it. Brilliant place. We're trying to get. I live in Severna Park, and my father-in-law was trying to get them to have a northern <laughs> expansion because nice. we don't want to go all the way down to Edgewater, but we do. I would build a German beer hall there. It's it's got the size to have uh, lots of tables, you know. And so I'm thinking outside the box, but I also know there was um, Blobs Park 
was successful. Right. Regina's in West Annapolis yeah. was very so, successful. I, and I think, you know, we, people can be critical of millennials or whatever they want. They, craft beer is back. We've got, yeah, we've is. got craft. Why couldn't there be a, I mean, there's a Hofbra house. Uh, my favorite beer is Hofbra. It, they have a Hofbra house in Pittsburgh. It's huge. It would be three times as big as what the art house is. That would be a unique destination. When I learn people are going to Pittsburgh, I go, go to Hofbra house. You have great beer. You have great food. There's live entertainment. So there's mine. If I could, if I was, pre, if I was mayor of Annapolis tomorrow, my vision would be to bring a, uh, a Are beer you hall. Are you, uh, you want me to announce right now? <laughs> yeah, we'll be <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and that's it. And that, you know what, uh, I know, kidding aside, um, in this column that I write has been great. I mean, if I ever were to run, I, there are several positions I've put down. You know, I, I don't think the county should be running golf courses. I don't think the city should be running a retail outlets. At least, you know, you can disagree with what I write or my opinion, and that's fine. I encourage you to do that. But I've spelled it out exactly. I can't, I would challenge any of the people in city leadership to do the same. I tell you what, why don't we take a break and when we come back, we'll talk specifically about what you said in your excellent op-ed. Sounds good. Hey folks, this is Tim Hamilton, your favorite co-host of the Maryland Crabs podcast. Besides being hilarious and charming on this podcast every week, I'm also a marketing professional with clients all over the region. I buy advertising and media for my clients, including TV, cable, newspaper, magazine, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. And this may surprise you, but I still buy direct mail. I know it sounds very 1978, but to be completely honest, if you have a compelling message to convey and you do it in a creative way, direct mail is dollar for dollar one of the best advertising channels out there, especially for small businesses who don't have much in the way of a marketing or advertising budget. And if I decide to use direct mail for a project, I call Post Haste Mailing in Annapolis. I've worked with Jack Ellis, the owner of Post Haste, for almost 15 years now on countless projects. And he is, in all honesty, my number one most trusted vendor. In fact, whenever I find myself in a crisis, a sales slump, an event that looked like it was going to fall on its face, a new product launch that was pushed up a few weeks, my very first phone call is always to Jack. He always gives me the answer I need. Maybe not the answer that I want, but one that gets me out of that particular jam. I'm not kidding. He has saved my job on more than one occasion. Seriously. So what does Post Haste Mailing do? Well, they do mailings, duh. That's in the name after all. But it's Jack's decades of experience that gives you the best bang for your marketing buck. Do you want to micro-target certain customers or neighborhoods or businesses? Jack can pull a list for you that makes sure that your mailing gets into the hands of your target demographic without the advertising waste that you get with other media. That means that if you have a small budget, you can still get the results you need. And if you need printing done, Post Haste Mailing can do that too. Postcards of any size, pamphlets, variable data printing, cut sheet laser printing, and a bunch of other printing terms that I don't understand. But Jack understands them, and he knows what's best for my business and how I can get the best bang for my buck. So if you're a business owner and you've never considered direct mail, give Jack at Post Haste Mailing a call to see what he can do for you. I promise you that you will be surprised at the options you didn't know were available to your business. Who knows? Maybe someday Jack can save your job too. And we're back with Jimmy DeButts from the Capital Gazette, and we're talking about his op-ed that ran on Sunday, right? Correct. Sunday about the Market House. This is one of, of myriad op-eds I've read in the last 13, 14 years, and this one was probably expressed the most frustration. I think you called it a spaghetti on the wall experiment, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the government spaghetti on the wall experiment, where this is yet another iteration of, let's just throw this out and see what happens. And and in last night's council meeting, I saw basically them tripping over themselves going backwards from what they proposed last month. So I think that's the frustration that- Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if you're like, I was a business reporter for several years and you know, when business people tell me like, hey, you tell us what the rules are and we're gonna follow those rules, we'll adapt. And so stability and reliability are huge when you're trying to run a business. And when you have somebody like these three groups that, that put in these bids, you know, they put their all heart and their effort into it only to be kicked down the road, like you were saying earlier. I let's, not, let, let's get beyond the heart and soul of putting in the, and the sweat equity they put into this. There were architectural drawings that were involved. In this This was not a cheap proposal. Yeah, I would have been livid last night had I put that much time into an RFP proposal and to have the council saying, we don't want to rush into this or, and not even say that we don't find anything wrong with it, but just like, well, we're not sure. We're going to kick this. I would have been, I would have been furious yeah, I mean, had that's, that happened. Yeah, that's it. thousands of dollars. You, like, architects aren't doing that uh, pro bono. This is, you know, this is not something they did lightly and yeah I would, I would have been living like I said I think my article I was uh, the frustration is there I mean obviously at least two of these groups if they you know if they're, they're going to delay till next September two of these groups aren't going to get picked possibly a third if they do another RFP it's, it's very possible new council comes in and says hey we're going to put a new proposal out which let's say they do that in December 
bids in by September, uh, March or so. So you're probably looking at next January being started. Two of these groups have already, that's, you know, six, eight months of, of, of time and effort. And if I'm a business in Howard County or Baltimore County, and I'm looking to expand, I would cross off Annapolis. This is the way they treat people in their own community. Why would I even think about someone last thing? night? And I don't know if it was Ross. Someone said, well, we have, and everyone kind of laughed. We have the reputation of being difficult to do business in the city and everyone kind of laughed. I'm like, that's nothing to laugh at. It's especially now that's, they're laughing because it's true. They know that they know in their hearts that this I, is the fact we've gone, we have railed on the podcast and privately just about how difficult it is to do business within the city. And last night was a perfect example of it. Absolutely. The textbook example of why businesses don't want to come here. I'm, I'm really pissed off yeah. about this. And I, and I look, I yeah, I mean, when I first came here in 2012, the, the city had uh, the Annapolis Department of uh, Education. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. One of those AAD. Yeah. We had a bunch and of so them. And so I'm not so. saying they, they did anything good or, or, or were didn't. functioning well. And but at were. least they were a conduit between the business community. I don't, and, and they're, they're, this, we're getting a little hype about how the city and the county are working together. The last night does not show me an example of government knows how the to uh, treat the business community. When you said that too, you said in the article you're saying the city government has no business in business. However, the problem we have here is that the lead, we can't sell it. Correct. Now there is some, I've, I've, besides commenters on columns that we talked about. I have, I think last year I recall where there was an opinion that, that made by the city attorney that maybe would we, the city would be able to sell it, which at this point, I think everyone would throw up their hands yeah, and say, do and, it. And, and, I, and I understand if I, I advocate for it, so I don't think they should be in running the, um, the market. They're either. horrible at it. Yeah. So I think if, so I'll take two, the, the one position I have is that I, if they haven't had contact with the, the people, apparently there's a, some kind of bylaws that say if they were to sell it, it goes back to, if, it, if it's not a market the house, family. it goes back to the family. We, no one knows who they Nobody are. Nobody knows who they are. I'm sure if they sold it, somebody would pop up, right? Do your due diligence, find the family and say, you know what? Right now you get zero. That's like a movie where you're <laughs> living in Arizona and all of a sudden you get a call from yeah. that. Well, I guess I'll move and yeah. run a market yeah. house. So you get, you get, you're getting zero now. We want to sell it, we want to get out of it, we'll give you 5% just because we don't want any more legality. We we're tired of this. That's what I would do. You would find, and again, it takes leadership and creativity to do that. So that's what I would do. Understanding, though, that if you did that and whoever you sold it to, it failed, then you would have it empty. So I understand the cities. You don't want that just sitting empty. And we're kind of used to it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, I mean. Yeah. I guess the question, and so, you know. Joe Budge's legislation to create a system to find uh, a suitable tenant was laudable in the sense that they say we want some, we want there to be you know community events or a farmers market. That's good. I think those things would serve the community well. And I think the big thing is, and we getting back to what you're asking about, what would make this successful? I've said for a long time, I think the city needs to do a lot better job recruiting people to live in the city. The people who would shop at a you know fresh market would be people who live in the city. So it's kind of the chicken and the egg. We don't have people, we don't have an influx of people living downtown, but we have lots of stri- lots of the, the space above our the main street businesses. Oh, you empty. mean, oh, I see what you're saying. So we want, you should be driving people to in. And what, I gotta be honest, I mean, to that, I mean, to that point, so, you know, I don't see, like, could we say that Ward 1 really supports downtown businesses? I mean, aside from t-shirt shops and, tour, you know, so like restaurants, maybe. But, you know, people always say, we want the rookies market back. I don't think Ward 1 residents would, would do that. The people who live in Murray Hill and mm-hmm. um, out off Duke of Gloucester. However, to your point, I think that if, you know, the people who live on the apartments on Main Street and Maryland Ave and then along uh, King George and, all, you know, they probably yeah. would. Why wouldn't if you're if you know if you're not living in Baltimore DC if you're a young person right why wouldn't you I mean it's a you know it's a good place you know it's it's not as exciting you know as as Baltimore DC but you know it's a great place I love Annapolis you know I think when I first came here before I, I even worked here I was like this is, I, I love Charleston South Carolina it reminded me a lot of Charleston the history and it's just a waterside it's it's a great community why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to live here can we talk about the 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 four groups because one dropped out the the the, the four groups who wanted to um, who, who put in right. Bids. You had Carolyn and David Marquise who own Chesapeake Brewing Company, which is a former grapes and purple tooth right near the Lowe's. Uh, and they proposed sort of a, a combination of a tourist tub, somewhat market type of a thing. Also was selling wine and beer to go. Uh, I guess similar to like Annabeth's on mm-hmm. Maryland mm-hmm. Avenue type situation. You've got Jody Danick's group, which had some input from Gavin Buckley, although he wasn't part of the group legally and technically. A very successful restaurateur for the Upper West Street and largely responsible for the revitalization sure. of Midder to out, Midder, Midder? There's a word. <laughs> Middle to Outer West Street and uh, you know, owner of several 
things. And he's actually paired with another Forest Drive successful business. The um, I'm drawing a blank on their names, but uh, they own the uh, cheese, uh, the cheese shop and yeah. um, mm-hmm. the clock tower clock place. Tower, yeah. And then you've got uh, G- Mary Giolitti came through with Giolitti's Deli, and she was essentially looking to replicate what she does up in parole. Mm-hmm. And that seemed to be the crowd favorite during the last meeting until halfway through the testimony yeah. someone yeah. said they just withdrew and the air just went out of the room yeah that's and again and i was talking about the the german that that would be at least a setting apart you know people always worried about you know um competing with existing businesses i don't i, I get that people are territorial they don't want there's a finite amount of people so that would have been at least a, a different business downtown right right and then the, the final the final one was uh, harvey blonders which was the annapolis oyster company which uh, involved a renovation was involved a, a full bar and Essentially, a restaurant with a, a market outside. There was and he's re- been managing the, the renovations to the market house for the last. Right, he's been managing the market house for the last five years. Right. He claims that, that he's, he claims that he's lost five million dollars. Or sorry, lost nine hundred thousand dollars. I believe five it. Five years, uh, and I, I do believe that. Yet the mayor has been campaigning that it's been open every day since he's been mayor yeah. and making money. Well, so because that does those... Maybe but, that's making money for the city. Cause, cause well, that, I think those are revenues not including yeah, expenses. And, and that's, the last time I talked to the mayor about that, it's, uh, it's making... It's not operating... The operating costs are not costing the city. The city still has uh, debt on the renovations. So from a year-to-year operating budget, no, it's not. It's in the black. Right. But if you're counting, which most people would, if you have a mortgage, you have to count that... As part sure. of your, uh, so yeah, so it's it's making money, it's not draining, but it's not making this. And that that was part of the argument that was several council sessions ago, where they moved the market house from its own enterprise fund into the general fund, mm-hmm. so they can they can't really track to see where that goes. So let's bring it us up to the meeting last night. So the meeting last night on the market house was ours. Uh, of, regarding the, the market house. Yeah, there was, there was about two and a half hours. You can watch the video on the Annapolis City, uh, Annapolis.com. Dot gov, uh, probably. Dot gov. I yeah. Get it, yeah. Website. And uh, it was about two hours of public testimony on this. And then the council debated probably for a good hour and a half before they made a decision well, about 11 15. But you can't gloss over what happened in that hour and a half where it was just one legged ducks going in circles for the most part where they're, they all of a sudden were, were backtracking on the RFPs, saying that the process that they laid out was being rushed. And, and so at one point, they wanted to, on the fly, they wanted the two groups to merge their operations into one entity, well, yeah, the, which the, was the, ridiculous. Yeah, Rhonda Pendel Charles. That was an embarrassingly and, and, ridiculous suggestion, let alone in a council meeting. And then she's trying to broker this, which is identical to what they tried to do and ultimately lost on the first round of the um, energy park. Hmm. When Alan Moyer was here, they had two competing bids. And the city council said, well, you know what? We're going to declare them all non-responsive unless you guys want to get together. Yeah. What I think is funny about that is that... And they said, well, yeah. later. <laughs> well, I think it's a perfect point because they try to broker... In one sense, they try to broker a deal or a uh, alderman woman try to broker a deal. In the other sense, they're, they're, they're hiding behind the uh, city attorney who says, well, they don't, they don't, none of them meet the required criteria. But I'm thinking you had two work sessions in July... After the first one, nothing, no red flags. After the second one, no red flags. You, you come to a city council meeting. I, I was under the understanding that the work, the work sessions were a chance for the public to have their input and also to help the people who've submitted these bids, the people who've put this time and money into this, to say, you Knock know what? the edges off. Yeah, yeah like, okay, we see where you're going, but if you want to meet the criteria, maybe you do X. Yeah. So, so it, it's again, I, I think it's just a total... Well, you, you succinctly put it into, into your editorial that the city you know, seemingly fast-tracked this when Joe Budge introduced this. And this process probably should have been introduced a year ago. They knew this lease But now they complain by the very people who And now they out. say, okay, we have this deadline set, and it's this deadline, this deadline, this deadline. And then like, yeah, no, but we're not going to listen to that. <laughs> now and now to, to Jared and Ian's, and I'm trying to remember the vote, to Jared, Jared's credit, credit, he was the one real, basically saying the same thing that we are saying right now. Uh, and, and Ian agreed with him, but everyone else backtracked and has been kicked to September. And in all reality, nothing will probably be done until after and, the election. And again, I, I don't think, I, I think the backtracking may be needed. I don't say it's legitimate because of what they did, because 
that the process itself. As it came out throughout this hour and a half of deliberations last night, it became painfully obvious to me that 90% of the council looked like they were high school students that just walked into like an AP physics class that they had no idea what's going on. I I don't think they read the proposals. I don't think they read the code. I don't think they knew what, what was supposed to be in the market house other than what, oh, this sounds good. And certainly when Gary, the uh, assistant attorney, was talking, he was saying this and this and this. And I mean, one thing I pointed out early on, I said every one of those proposals, including Gilides, had a booze component to it. The city council has nothing to say about the ABC issuance of a liquor license. They're a totally independent body. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to Harvey Bonner? Say, yeah, okay, go ahead, cool. Open a bar and, you know, have dance until 2 a.m. or whatever the heck you want to do. And the city... ABC doesn't issue a license. Then was that the issue with Compromise Street with the restaurant pulling out? There was that they were going in under the assumption that they were going to have a two a.m. license. No, I had I had heard that. I, 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 I don't know that, enough they, to they gossip pulled, about it. They pulled it, out yeah. of that and they put that on that. That's what, that project's pretty much on hold now because they can't figure out what to do with it. But they pulled out just because of the bureaucracy with the city. Why well, do that? I, I heard and they, they and they and they said I've I've had enough. We've jumped through enough hoops and they went out and they bought. Um, Deep Creek. Uh, I don't know whether they bought it in parallel with what they were developing Mm -hmm. or whether they moved out of here to do that. But uh, now John Bruno has a couple pieces of steel beams down on city dock. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just like I remember. So, (laughs) so you know, it's funny. Took care of the view. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. So Jimmy's your your op-ed. Had you written it today rather than two days before the, the city council meeting, they were fulfilling the prophecy. They yeah. did everything that you said that shouldn't be done was done in that meeting last yeah, night. Yeah, I mean, and I, yeah. we can accuse being critical of the city or just kind of. This is one day that I'm not going to apologize yeah. for. And I am so livid after watching the meeting last night. But to your point, the city shouldn't be in the business of business. And last night, they were as much saying that, saying that we shouldn't, we don't know what we're doing. But then they want to direct what it should be. So they keep contradicting themselves. Huh. They will not give up control of something that they have demonstrated that they cannot do. I wish this was uh, an example of like of corruption where they're like holding out for like, the favor thing because oh, I wish it was. then they'd go they'd go, "Oh, okay, maybe something's coming." But this this is just this is just their ineptness. I mean, if if it was something they were corrupting like, "Hey, at least something's getting done." But no, they have no idea what they're but doing. But there are plenty of people to blame for this. And I blame uh, the Moyer administration more than anybody. I, I, I blame Mayor Moyer and the Moyer administration, uh, and, and some of whom are still involved in this to this day. And I, I will lay the blame uh, on the feet. And I think that there's been messes to clean up for every administration since. But everyone has put their own stamp on it. Yeah. Up to now, they, they have an opportunity to finally put this to bed. And last night, they demonstrated that they are just going to continue the same policies that were pushed for by their predecessors of just inaction and ineptitude and just incompetence. That I'm not going to play it. And again, I have to keep saying this. I'm going to put an asterisk for Lippmann and Pfeiffer for the ones who said, let's move this forward. Yeah. You know, so. and it's, it is funny. The ones that are leaving are the ones that actually took a stand. I mean, sure. Because like, they didn't, I mean, it would be easy. It's, I mean, it, that is the easy thing to do just to go, hey, well, we tried. And let the voters decide. And I, I, Now, John's point, John's saying look, that, all right, they may need more time for this. And if, if that's true, then fine. Let's not get mad at last night. Let's get mad at the fact that the, that the process was broken yeah, that they that introduced. Was, then yeah. you, then you, you either screwed it up last night or you screwed it up in the beginning. Yeah. But someone do something. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Two weeks ago, they should have come out and said, hey, you know, our law, city of law looked at this and looked at the proposals and we see some things that we need to figure out. We need another week. We need another two weeks, whatever it may be. And we're going to postpone from July 31st to September 3rd and, and, and done that before to give that out. Yeah, but no, perfect, it was yeah. all, boom, no, we need to do it the 31st. We need to do it the yeah. reverse and get it done. That's a perfect, because I think they were, the, um, the bids were and, due like June 29th or something like that. Yeah. And, the, and, and so, but, yeah, yeah, they had time to review them. And then you look at David Gerald, who was the acting city manager last night because Tom Andrews was on, on vacation. I mean, he says, once you say one of these proposals is good, that triggers a months long process of negotiation. Mm. And we've got to negotiate well, can they work with Hopkins Plaza? Can what are we gonna do with parking? What are we gonna do with renovations? Can we expedite permits? How long is it gonna be closed? Can we get them a liquor license? Can we you know the, the, all this has to come back to negotiation? Mm-hmm. 
absent the, uh, oh, we need more fresh produce as opposed to prepared foods and we need more t-shirts or whatever the hell they're going to Can you say that there. too, by the way? And I'm, I, I, in a former life, I was involved in that. Fresh produce did not do anything down there. People say they want fresh produce. It didn't, it didn't move. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. Yeah. It does, people but, say they want certain things and that's where I blame Ward 1. Well, they say they want things, they don't. Well, they want them, but they only want them one time a month. Yeah, <laughs> right. And so it, it doesn't help. Well, it's convenient. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think, I think then at that point, they should realize that this process is probably from the point that you say, yeah, we're going to go with you. Like if they voted last time, it's going to be a six month to a seven, eight month deal. So this should have been way before year. And I mean, everything that you've said, the way this makes the city look, I mean, business friendly. I mean, you can take a look at the, whether you'd like it or not, the Eastport landing project and the, the abnormalities that have flown with that. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see it all. All the hair stand on the back of people's necks for the Starbucks that's going in on forest drive. Oh my gosh, the city didn't, you know, tell anybody about this and now we are. And the problem I told people, I said, no, it's not. I said, you are only involved and interested when it jumps in your backyard. Exactly. The city has had it on their website and it's been on the monthly spreadsheet that planning and zoning Mm -hmm. puts out and it's been on the monthly. You're you're a policy wonk. So you follow that. that, That's fine. And if, and if you're concerned about your neighborhood, then you need to do, then you need to do that too. Although I do believe that the aldermen, I think that's probably part of their job. True. That right. they should say, hey, these are the yeah, developments exactly. that's yeah. going to impact our thing, but that's a different story. I mean, yeah, I think Joe does a good job of kind of keeping Eastport folks aware. It's part of your responsibility. Ward yeah, Ward 1. Uh, is that Ward Ross. Ross. I'm saying Ross. Ross. I'm sorry, Ross. I'm sorry, Ross. Yeah. Yeah, I think to your point, John, that it would have been nice and, you know, the government, I've never met uh, or seen a government, a new administration take over any form of government who doesn't look for efficiencies. It's a, my favorite word. I want to be in the efficiency business because everybody has a study. But I think if... It, if it would have been nice if they would have said, okay, we're putting this RFP out. We know you want to do liquor because everybody had liquor in there. We're going to fast track these things. And right. these are, when you get accepted, XXX are going to be, you know, approved. They did it for the Yacht Club. Yeah. They okay. fast tracked it. The Yacht Club demonstrated to me that if the city has the political will, they can move things along at a nice that's great point. Sure. Yeah. That's a great, that happened but, but, overnight. Yeah, I, I, I will say December 13th to January 1st. Yep, they were out of the out out of Compromise yeah, Street yeah, yeah. and in in. They blew their cover right there because any project after that, like something like this, it has a public interest, and they say, "Well, it takes forever." You can say, "Well, the yacht club with all the politically connected people yeah, who yeah, belong yeah. to it and everything yeah. that moved along at light speed." Yeah, that, that don't was, tell me you can't do that. Yeah. Efficiencies are there if you're properly motivated. That's that's a great point. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the, just look at the club who's on the club list. I guess I mean if you can get exactly. those if you can get those people on your your uh, your bid, <laughs> maybe you can. Be fast tracked. Yeah. Well, let's take a break and then we'll come back and talk about the future. And we'll, we'll if there is one. If we should we bitch a little more? I huh. think we should. Okay. Hi, this is Anne Arundel County Executive Steve Shu. We hear the headlines every day: heroin, fentanyl, even elephant tranquilizer. But addiction usually starts with prescription drugs. Don't be silent about this problem. Talk to your children. Ask your doctor to provide only the minimum number of pills necessary. Go to denialisdeadly.org right now for the tools you need to stop heroin addiction before it starts. And we are back. We're back here again with Jimmy DeButts from the Capital Gazette Communications, as it says on his business card. And he is the associate editor, which means you're like the number two guy there, right? I don't think there's any. There's number one, Rick. There's and then there's one. everybody else that's trying to scrape and keep the papers from moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, Miss America, if Rick can no longer fulfill his obligations, then you put this Rob Hyas and Arai would, I would probably, uh, we'd have a, you know, Game of Thrones duel and... Um, I don't watch that show, so I'm just making stuff up yeah, as I talk. <laughs> well, well, there was a Game of Thrones reference in Chase Cook's article, I saw that, yeah, that was article this morning when they all... I, didn't, I don't watch the show, but I got the, the reference. Just marched down saying, shame, shame. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what goes forward with this. You know what was interesting last night? So Gavin, Gavin's interesting to me because uh, he sometimes will trip on his own thoughts and words. So, so he, he can... But he has moments of great eloquence. And last I, night... Last night, I think he did. Last night was one of those moments where he was, only, he was begging them, saying, please let... And, even not his group, but he's. He, I, I felt that he was talking about David, group, David, right? and Caroline, and Harvey, let and us, everybody else. Let absolutely. us do what we know how to do, you know. And and I think that was. I, I wanted to shake counsel and say, will you let people who know what they're doing do it? Yeah. And they can. They are tripping over themselves for the last thirteen years. Step aside, just but to sit there and shuffle your papers and snidely say last night, going, "We're rushing the project and we have to get it right." That is such bull. Yeah, and you look at what like, I think John you said earlier is like you look at what Gavin and his folks at Don West at our Westry have done. Right. 
or middle. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, and then we get tripped up with like the city, they'll find a way to mess things up. I mean, a mural becomes one of the central points in the last four years. And okay, is it historic? No. Is it intriguing? Yes. Do I want to do learn more about these kind of things? Yes. And so you're right. If, if a guy who's had success where previously there was no success, even if you don't give it to him, listen to him. Listen to smart people. Bring smart people into this community and listen to them. So well, when you talk about the mural, I happen to notice that in front in the historic district, in front of the Fleet Reserve Club, there is now a mural on the brick. Oh, nice! I have to go. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a mosaic mural. I tell you, but so, it's got a sailboat though, so it's, uh, it's, it's probably okay. passes. Okay. <laughs> so what? All right. So let's look at what what actual tangible positive things that can be done to move it along. I mean, besides locking city council up until they decide to, that it's, they used to do that with the Pope. They'd lock them into a room until they made a decision. <laughs> well, I, I think this city but, council, I think every single one of them, with the exception of Rhonda Pendell Charles, now, if they didn't, now has a race on their hands as far as election goes. I think there's enough people that are pissed off at this thing, about this decision, about the, the council's ineptitude to do that. I think this... It wouldn't have been... I tell you, it wouldn't have been a uh, campaign issue until last night. I think it was It was kind of limping along, but everyone had forgot about it for the most part. I, not many people... The market house doesn't come up, come up often, but now it is back on the radar. And and it's going to be... Matter of fact... Up right I, before the primary. I'd say it, it is now, maybe not quite, but it's at Crystal Spring level as far as issues. Because yeah. it, and it wasn't. It, it is now. It, you're right. And it's funny in this city, like, you know, we talk about the registered voters and more Democrats, obviously double, I think, than... So that doesn't matter in this in the city. What matters is issues like this. It's weird what like Crystal Spring and and the old faucets that that changed an election and and it was more people wanting things to stay the same. I don't know what people do because if I don't think the people uh, at Annapolis want a failing market house, but I think you're right. I think it, it, this is going to actually be something that. It's in itself, it's self-inflicted. That's the beauty of it. Well, and that's, <laughs> they did it to themselves. That's a symbolism, and we said we said that coming in in the first segment is just that this has been just in the smack dab in the middle of the city as a reminder of the failure of local government. And that's not to say that our local government's a failure because it certainly isn't. There's been many, many, many positive things. The the day to day services are offered. Everything is fine. But they got that albatross that's around their neck that just can't shed. And it's just so easy to take it off. Is just give it to the business people. People and then just get it off your plate. Yeah, I think you're right. I think in a municipality, especially the size of Annapolis, if you have the roads clear when it snows, exactly, there's no major. And, and you know, to the uh, panel ladies and the council's credit, there hasn't been. I mean, they've had some success with the solar. Yeah, product. I mean, we we can all. I mean, again, it's it's you can bash city government. If we were in Frederick, if we were in Salisbury, if we were in Cumberland, we'd be having the same discussions. Yeah, they do a lot of things right. They're not a failure. They're not even close to it. All the administrations you know, have, have had. But this one thing is just that frustrating thing that you can't, yeah. and you John, can't get rid I think of. It's, it, you don't want the last thing before somebody goes into a voting booth to be a negative. Right. No. And this very well could be. Do you think that's, uh, that's what killed Josh Cohen? Now, do you think, Gavin, uh, we, that's the elephant in the room for him, is that do you think that there's a conflict with him running for mayor? And You know, I, I don't. And this is, and people keep bringing this up. And this really— It's a fair me, question. This, this really pisses me off because—and and to, to a degree, Carolyn Marquis did this, too. They said, you know, don't postpone this because we're considering expanding our operations based on what you're doing. And I'm like, don't ever base— your business growth <laughs> on the city government yeah. doing well, something. Yeah. Okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do the check part, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that, that makes no sense whatsoever. But I mean, Gavin, I mean, is, he, is just because he is running for mayor, and I'll throw this out to the national level, I mean, is Trump, because he's running for president, supposed to put all of his business on hold while he is? But when he, well, yes, him, yeah. When, when he becomes mayor. Jimmy Carter then, sold his peanut farm. Then we've got an issue. But right now, no. I mean, Gavin needs to continue. He needs to expand his businesses. He needs to figure out what he's going to do. If this is a way to and and he's not legally and paperly involved yeah. with this but no i mean to call for him to rec- you know, no he absolutely should be i yeah. mean he's look what he's done and really look and that's to me and he and he was saying it the best time to do it is now because if he gets elected mayor right it's going to be it's, it would be more of a conflict because that's your friend even if it's not a, a financial benefit to you that's your friend but it's but, a fair question. No, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I don't know. I mean, do I personally think he could he could separate the two? Absolutely, I do. I, we all know Gavin's character. We know who he is. He's a great guy, and, and he, he. I think he's ethical above board. So I believe he could do it. But it is a fair question because to Jimmy's point, if this had happened in January, where all of a sudden he was putting the bids, it it, yeah. it would not pass the smell yeah, I mean, test just, or the optics himself, at least. But yeah, yeah, but 
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it, give it to him, don't give it to him, or give it to the, the group that he's supporting. But do it now. I mean, because it's not fair, because obviously he's one of the, uh, the anchors of our business community. And so out of respect to what he's done and the fact that he's followed the pro- like every, all, all the three or four other folks that have submitted they followed the procedure as it was prescribed to them I think in my comment I put reasonable people, reasonable people expect reasonable results and it, it's not unreasonable to, for them to say for them to expect the decision to come when they said it was going to so happen. last night we uh, yet again talking about putting process after the RFP was requested but it was thrown out going we should have a blue ribbon panel which I think we've done panels before. I think we've done charrettes before. We've yeah. done all these yeah, things. We just call them different things. Yeah. Can we, can, so this ridiculousness of getting, because everyone has a different view of what it should be. And you can ask me and Jimmy and John, Jimmy John, and you could say, hey, what should it be? And we, I think the three of us have a disagreement of what could work or anything, but you're just fantasizing at that point. I feel like you have to go, you, you have to bring in the people, like fly them in, truck them in, do whatever you have. The people who operate these market houses in other cities are successful and saying, tell us how to do this it's not that hard go to Baltimore right go to Philadelphia <laughs> you know, and that, don't just go that around away. but sit down with the yeah, operators yeah, yeah. sit down with the vendors and say can we pick your brain for a couple yeah. days and I'm sure they'd be happy to do it because you know they, they know how hard it is and, and or they know the struggles most business people I know they if they've had something trip them up they don't want that to trip up the next person so I'm going to pick on the people of Annapolis now so I mean I think we've already picked on the city and I, 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 I wish we had another hour so we could pick on the city some more because that's how upset I am about last night's meeting but if you went to Ward 1 and said what do you want and they're going to say oh we want groceries and fresh produce and fit they don't. I do not think they they would support it because everyone lamented when Stevens shut down, mm-hmm. and everyone I talked to, anecdotally, they hadn't been to Stevens in years. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things and that people like the idea of something in town, but they don't actually go to it. There was a great the Mission Barbecue is doing great. If it was, yeah. <laughs> no. well, the same thing's going on right now with with um, Starbucks. Uh, over on Forest Drive, people are saying, oh, no, we got to have Zoo Coffee, which I love Zoo Coffee. It's, it's got to be a local business. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm like, do you shop at Growls? Yeah. Or do you go to Whole Foods or do you go to Giant yeah. or to Safeway? Right. But people like the idea of Growls. They like the idea of the local. So yeah. That's fine. I love the idea of a local harbor store so, down there instead of a, of a barbecue. Joint. So I pick on... But then it's everyone, not making money. It's yeah. not good for anybody. That said, and the mayor said this in our mayoral forum, he said, we have a world-class market, which was a bit of a stretch. And he said, shame on you if you don't go. But I've gone down... I, my go-to place... Uh, you know, I love Pips, you know, that and mm-hmm. Mason's lobster rolls are fantastic. If I need a quick bite, those are the places I go to. The market house doesn't, ha- I mean, they, they had great pizza for a while until they pulled the guy. But there's, you could get a quick bite at the, at, at, I can't pick on the vendors really at the market house. They actually do a pretty decent mm-hmm. job. So I go to the locals. Have you even checked it out? Or have you gone there? And the answer is going to be no. So I look at the locals and say, if we had a new market house, a new, the, the fourth or fifth, no, I'm sorry, it would be the fifth iteration of the market house. If we had that, would you actually go? Or is it just one of those things that you would lament what we had and just have never tried it out? I, I'm looking at the people of Annapolis here and saying, you know, yeah. just walk the talk. I think, you know, I think, again, I think it has to be a balance. It has to be, again, if I can, I think my German restaurant, my German beer garden. You're, you're work, that, yes. But um, it ha- I do, I think it has to be that balance. And I think Gavin, you know, I'm not trying to say his bid is the one, or not his bid, excuse me, his, his, the group that he supports, Jody's group. Mm-hmm. That has the most intriguing thing to me. That has the I most intriguing too. one. And I think, it ha- and, there, and to their point, it has to be something the locals go to and it has to be something that tourists go to. Which is hard. Yeah. I mean, you go to Inner Harbor in Baltimore, there's a, it's sugar, or there used to be a sugar, and may not be in there because my daughter would go in there all the time. Yeah, they're, they're going to pop in there, but that's, that's, you can't rely on locals to go in there. Well, look yeah. at, so I said before, I said, we don't have a crab house in Annapolis. And someone would at this point go, well, what about buddies? I defy you, and nothing against Harvey, I defy you to find a local. Uh, you'd, you'd have a hard time finding locals go to Buddies because it's not a local's place. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so again, nothing against it. Yeah, Cantler's would be probably where everybody goes. Yeah, and even like, Cantler's. Uh, look, you go to... Uh, that's kind of... I don't know. I, but uh, but it, if, if I could wave a wand, you know, and I've never owned a business like of that, so of course I know everything about it. But I have a crab house down there, you know, and that, then there's probably 15 different reasons why that wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's my point is that everyone thinks... It's sort of like everyone wants to own a bar or a restaurant because they think it would be cool and then you get into it and realize that yeah, it's it a is to work it's but everyone thinks they can run a particular business and that's how the market house everyone has an opinion about what what the city's doing wrong and how could they make it work and th- the reality is probably is that maybe it can't work the way it is again, but, to, again to but my point, point is the city better but they're not recognizing that 
they better recognize that they've, they've shown time and time again that they're horrible at this and they're not learning from that mistake. Right. Is it, can it work as a market house? I don't know anymore? if it can. And if it can't, then you need to leave it to the people that know how to make so, it. So you look, we, we've I had, had a, a, I had a great suggestion on Twitter this morning off of the article that I wrote on what happened. So I said, as Colin Meter had said, raise it, paint lines on it. Right. And surround it with food trucks and it rent food truck stalls on a daily basis. Yeah, and you could, yeah, you could rotate those. That, that'd be fine to rotate those. That'd be great. We, we, we would welcome that kind of rotation. I'd love that. The downtown restaurants would scream. But, oh, yeah, never, yeah. but that said, like if you think about that, and again, I'm not picking on any downtown restaurants, but I think they try to be a little everything to everybody sometimes. And we've, took, we've been critical of the down, downtown restaurants, like the ones at Market Square, yeah. with, the, with a couple notable exceptions. I think Iron Rooster has a great local following. Mm-hmm. Right. Pips, uh, the hot dog place, has got a great local following. But if I want a quick bite in Annapolis, it's very difficult to yeah. do that. So maybe, maybe and, that's and, not the worst suggestion. And also, you know, it's, nothing happens in a vacuum. So the market house is where it is. And if we want locals to go down there, and I, I know this goes back to the master plan was passed right before Cohen got it. 2009? Yeah, 2009. Yeah. And so, again, there's people, reasonable people can say, you know, we want change it, we don't like it. But it, they passed it, and then the new administration came on and they, they dropped it, which is, that's their right. But I will always contend, because I've seen it happen in Greenville, South Carolina, Birmingham, Alabama. If you have green space, people will use it. People will go downtown. I have a dog. I see dog people all over the city. I don't know where you think they do their business, but they do it in the street. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you had a dog, you know, if you made City Dock more attractive to locals, you'd have more local people go down there and more people would, would use it. So I think that whatever happens at Market House needs to be thinking long term. And I, I know it's funny to me, all the businesses I did a story a few years ago on um, the future of the vision for Annapolis, imagine that. And the business people don't want to lose a single parking spot downtown because it'll drive them out of business. When they redid the bulkhead, 40, 50, 60 spaces were unusable for six months. How many places, how many places went, how many places went out of business? That's an interesting point. So it takes leadership, it takes vision. And I don't, I'm not egotistical think I have the only vision that would work or that I have all any right answers, but John does what's working. Yeah. John is going to give us the, (laughs) but what's, what is the, process and the results from what they're doing now isn't working obviously with the market house is not working so you know i think it was a rush i think it was stupid that they tried to rush this in six months or whatever but once you set that in those 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 like worse at the end of this yeah. process yeah last night was again i've said this fifteen thousand times but last night was appalling that just it just demonstrated what's wrong and i don't know maybe i've gotten pessimistic about the market house i don't know if there's anything you can do if you go through annapolis depending on the ward everyone's gonna have a different thought as to what goes in there and to be honest with you if there was a way to sell it i would say just sell it it's because water finds its own level if you have money invested in that you have skin in the game you have mm-hmm. to force a way to make it work yeah. and i think the city it doesn't matter if it's sitting empty for years or if it's running it doesn't really matter to the city and look at the people that's a very prime location where the foot traffic is already heavy i would say people that have had success on middle west street if they can make things work there and, and build a cluster of success there why couldn't they do that? They, they would they would find creative ways to get to, to make it work. I, and if it doesn't work, then then John's idea of raising it and, and putting in front of food trucks. Well, I, I I think I think a lot of it, and it'd be interesting. This would be something to put your people on in the capital because you got all the resources. But there's a certain entitlement to restaurants. The closer they get to the water, to feel that that my water view, my proximity to the water, to the hub of downtown, can excuse. My food, not all restaurants, but some. Oh, but that's like a Times Square effect. You go to New York, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. no one goes, hey, there's a great restaurant at Times Square. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, you do that. But I mean, it'd be interesting to look at like the Yelp reviews and whatnot and start out at, oh, yeah. at parole. Oh, and as you move inward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's like five stars in parole and you lose, <laughs> you lose a star for every mile closer <laughs> yeah, you get. You get down there, you get down there on the water and it's, uh, you know, this is no, this is no good. Well, because we're in a very difficult position that is not abnormal to a tourist destination. But it, when you're in business owner do you pick a horse saying i'm going to be for the locals or i'm going to be for the tourists can you be everything to everybody or because you know you you see that with the restaurants in in the winter 
where they're just kind of bemoan, where are all the locals? I'm like, well, you didn't have time exactly. for us in the yeah. summer, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you know and, I, and with substandard food. And it is, I, I could pick on a couple of restaurants right now that are coasting on the location and, and I'm not picking on local business, but it's true. I, and I have some phenomenal restaurants over in Eastport, you know, that, that, uh, to be fair, I won't name them just because, yeah. of, but that, that are phenomenal that don't have the same views. Cause you said Venn 909, that'd be indiscreet. Wouldn't I it? love that place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to flow on over in Western Athens, but I hear that's been <laughs> fantastic. But, but, well. but to your point, you know, can, can you have something successful that's down by the water that's not tourist based? You know, I, I think, I think you could. I mean, you, you I mean, Iron, you, Iron Rooster does it. Mark, does I think, it. I think the, the Carolyn David Marquise had some just of a good idea in there and bringing some aspect to visit Annapolis down into that. Uh, I don't know that I, I'm all on board with the kiosks to buy tickets to all your attractions and whatnot, but to be at, maybe to have a little outpost hmm. part of that. That brings the uh, customers, the tourists in, find information about the city, maps for walking tours, maybe to find out where to go buy your watermark ticket or whatever it may be. But then it also brings them into the area where presumably, hopefully, locals are going to be dining, eating, mm-hmm. Etc. I mean, it, it, it could work, but the city has just woefully not done their homework and they were woefully unprepared to, to put this forward. It was done prematurely. Uh, I get that Joe Budge wanted to get it done before, and that was very admirable of him to say, hey, you know, we've got a lease that's ending at the yeah, end yeah. of the year. We need to do something about it. At least it was, was some he, forethought, at least. Even he was, was a year late. Yeah. Uh, everybody else was just sitting there going, oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and maybe that was what, you know, Blonder wanted. Maybe he wanted it just to sort of get to the end of the year. Then he's in the catbird seat. Mm-hmm. Hey. You know, what, what now? All right, so we're running out of time, so uh, let's go through here. I'll so, say, before we, before we go, I just want to read the last paragraph or so from your column, which I thought was really good. And it ties into with what I had said. That I think all of the city council now is very vulnerable coming in this election. But you said, each member has held their seat a minimum of four years. If they haven't gotten a sense of what the public wants by now, perhaps they shouldn't return after the November 7th general election. And let's not forget the city council's recent questionable fiscal aptitude. After much deliberation and public input, the council chose to sell the old rec center at 9 St. Mary Street to a residential developer for a million dollars less than a competing bid in 2015. So spare us the faux concern. This was the city's chance to get it right. Annapolis deserves better leadership. It was their chance to get it right. You minced words there. And I think think they blew it. (laughs) Yeah, I, I I agree with John. Is I think I I can't tell you how you're and you wrote that before. Yeah, <laughs> before the meeting, there was some hope of me that they would they would not delay. You know, I was I was hoping that would be almost wrong. But, you know, the fact that they just came through yesterday and even it, actually messed it up worse than even I could have. Predicted. It's a campaign issue now. And it wasn't before yeah. last night. All right. So if you let's go through here. So, Jimmy, how, in, in a minute or less, how do you solve the, the market house? What would you do? <laughs> I, I think, we haven't done it in 13 years, and you give it to the to do 45 it seconds, Jimmy. <laughs> I think, you know, at this point, it, is, it was too rushed in April. At this point, I think the current council has shown they don't know what they're doing. I would just bounce it till the new one comes in. I mean, I, I feel bad for all the, the people who, who submitted proposals, but... They should go back for money. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you sue <laughs> because you could. It's one one attorney's opinion that they didn't they didn't meet the criteria. But you have one city council woman or a woman saying, "Let's let's mix the two. Let's let's blend the two. So, because it's because going back, I didn't hear. Maybe I heard wrong. I didn't anyone say we're this. None of this is what we're looking yeah. for. It's just that they couldn't make up their mind. Yeah. And so, yeah, and panel ladies told me on Thursday I didn't put in my story. He said, you know, they're all three are better. What's that? What's going on right now? So. Sheila Finlayson said, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Well, yes, we are as a city. You had the chance. They, the council but that's had your the job. Chance. Yeah, they had the chance. You're, damned, you're damning the city to further stagnation. But if you can't make a decision and you're elected to make decisions, then, then don't take why, the position. Why are you in that seat? I, 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 yeah. I'm being very critical. And uh, again, I have to let the, the council members last night who are on our side on this one, off the hook on this one. But for those who, decide, who voted to kick it down the road, they should be ashamed of themselves. And, and they've, they, they've cemented Annapolis's reputation for being business unfriendly sure, last night. Yeah. And it, it, it was a debacle. But I mean, to your point, I, I, I agree. At this point, the damage is done. I, I'd say wait till the next, the, the next council. Yeah. Jimmy DeButts, the associate editor of The Capitol, here with us talking about his fantastic article, which will be linked in the show notes, uh, as well as Chase Cook's piece on what actually happened at the meeting. And we'll also do the, that, uh, if we can find and it, Brian, Brian Gill's, Brian Gill's uh, excellent, excellent, excellent on the, on the breakdown. History, history of the market house and the political history. 
history, I guess, of it is if you want a real history of it, buy Ginger Doyle's book called Gone to Market, which is just a phenomenal. Yeah, it's really good. History book, if you can find it. I think they may have it at the Maritime Museum. So, Jimmy, how they reach you if uh, the listeners have story ideas or. Uh, you can reach me at uh, J Debutt, J D E B U T T S, at capgaznews.com. Um, and Twitter? The Twitter? The Twitter is JD at JD30. JD3217, sorry, yeah. Please, uh, we we always want to hear what, I don't care if you like it or not, just if you have story tips. No, you or, care a little bit. I care a little bit, but uh, I'm mostly... Uh, just, I asked him in the beginning, I said, do you read the story comments? He's like, no, you don't. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> sometimes you do, yeah. Sometimes you, you I don't go back for second I hate or third. So. <laughs> I hate them, but I have to read them. Oh. But Jimmy, hey, thanks for well, coming thank on. You, you have some great, great articles. The one in the Waffle House was fantastic, and uh, we love your stuff, and we want to have you come back. We have you and Chase on so far. We'd love to have you both come on okay. one of these days, and we'll have a couple of beer, and we'll, we'll uh, trash the city again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, all right. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank this has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.